So this brings us to our second story of the month, and that is uh, the research surrounding Cheddar Man. Now, Cheddar Man is one of my favourite prehistoric persons. Uh, that that should that should be an acronym, PP, a prehistoric person. Um, <laughs> um, in so much as uh, he was uh, a human being, a Homo sapien, um, who was uh, recovered from Cheddar Gorge, and he is a Paleolithic uh, prehistoric person. He's one of the earliest known modern humans to live on in the land that would become the island that is today britain and for a long time people have pointed to him as being uh, possibly the first briton which is of course a, a flawed assertion uh, uh, at the best as of times. we've had hominids living in britain for at least the last half million years yes but, um, exactly give, yes. Or take, give or take a few ice ages yeah and we'll come back to this whole thing of briton and britons and in the in the next segment yeah. um but uh, but he uh, he he's uh, he's also been always a fascinating find for me a fascinating prehistoric person because he also shows signs of the, maybe some of the desperation that he found himself in. Uh, it's likely that that he and maybe well actually by definition at least one other person found themselves in this cave uh, at a time when perhaps the uh, the and the local food resources had dwindled. Maybe the deer had gone away or something like that. And, uh, well, he was, it seems, butchered. Um, either for cannibalistic reasons or as part of, as you as you, uh, uh, you were not so kindly uh, sort of nudging me with before, part of a ritual. Um, which, which is not the same as just undefined behaviour. I think we should, we should, you know, we should always try and, and be clear about that. Undefined behaviour is not the same as a ritual. Um, um, <laughs> it's not just... It's just the archaeological factual for we don't know. Oh, it's not. It's really not. It's not. I really... I can't begin to tell you how much I really think, think that joke is out of date. Um, we're, we're, that's, why keep, that's why I keep on winding you up. Uh, yeah, so... But anyway, anyway, he was... he He's a fascinating um, person and, and the circumstances of his, of his death um, also fascinating, but uh, there's been a, a series of of um, uh, of studies, seemingly resulting in a paper that that, that came out this month, that have uh, made some very strong assertions about his appearance, and this seems to be annoying certain people. It does because he has genetic markers for sub-Saharan Africa, which means he was what we'd now call ethnically black. Now, and just, 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 that has really, really annoyed certain people. Now, just who just, have a, just, just, just before we just dive into that a little bit further, are you saying, yeah. are you saying, God forbid, he was a human being? <laughs> like, 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 don't aren't we all basically, you know? It, it, yeah. Anyway, sorry, that's the point. That is that, that. But that, you know, that is the that is the point. Um, what what we've got here? I mean, you know, Julian Richards did a wonderful series called Meet the Ancestors. Mm -hmm. Which really, zo you know, zoomed in on this fascination we have with our relatives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, l l love, love them or loathe them, we're stuck with them, mm. and that extends to our historical relatives too. Mm. Um, you know, people are, uh, um, it, you know, wh it, why do people do family histories and so on? But but what Ch Cheddar Man, as he's been called. Uh, goes right to the heart of is issues of perception of family and identity because by um, proving with some very smart well argued and has to be said very well presented science with both open access papers and a channel 4 documentary uh, that followed the process and so on the, the, the team that worked on this which was drawn from all over the place including primarily the Natural History Museum and, and, and um, UCL's Institute of Archaeology um, they've created this rounded picture of a person hmm. Hmm. Um, right down to a, a, a fabulous um, very evocative um, bust of what Cheddar Man is thought to have looked like according to the best possible evidence hmm. and interpretation of that evidence and, um, well, and also actually I don't know if you remember but a few, several, a few years ago now I think uh, it was shown that there are still people living in Britain who are likely related to him. It, it's un, yes. you know it's unsurprising, uh, but but that possibly led to some people being genetically 
Significant. Yeah, yeah, genetically, genetically related to him. Yeah. Um, uh, but that led to some people being so surprised by this because there is, and this really, this just to get to the heart of it, there is this perception that the past somehow looks like the present. Exactly. People yeah, often, and it's the same color as the present. And it's the same color as the present. Yes, even though, even yeah. though we all know that in the mid twentieth century we went through a phase of being just everything was just black and white. Obviously, according to the films. Um, but <laughs> but you know, crucially, yeah, people they sort of project onto the past a sort of a, a, a geopolitical uh, in particular but also a, um, uh, an ethnic present uh, which they are comfortable with and that is in part to do with how and where you're brought up uh, but also it's, it's simply to do with the limitation of the human lifespan we can often I mean frankly even I even though I know this stuff I've struggled to imagine that that sort of distance and so it's, this is a very literal direct in your face no pun intended challenge to to how people perceive the the origins of humanity in Britain uh, and indeed in Europe, um, according to the National History um, Natural History Museum uh, FAQ on this particular uh, discovery, uh, they talk about how uh, the results that is um, the uh, results indicated that cheddar man skin pigmentation was most likely in one of the two most highly pigmented. Uh, categories. There are five categories of pigmentation, and in, instead of being sort of very incredibly pale, uh, like my lovely Northern Irish wife, um, <laughs> they're at the other end of the spectrum, or, they, or here's at the other end of the spectrum, dark or dark to black, uh, and it's definitely yes. not in the lightest of categories. Uh, and this this is raised, um, well, in some respects, I think a very healthy uh, conversation about what it means to be. Uh, British, and we'll come to that in the next segment, uh, but also what it means in that sense to be a human being. And and maybe, actually, we should be think, trying to think about human, humanity as actually an ever-changing species, a, a face that is not fixed. And even though that is difficult for some, for example, it's very tempting to think about, you know, Viking genes and all this sort of thing. And I've I've made videos in the past talking about Celtic genetics, for example so-called uh, that is actually a flawed way of viewing a, a global species it's a flawed way of viewing actually what we are in reality because our, our outward, outward appearance is not the same as our genetics yeah absolutely right and, and, and you know if we as archaeologists and historians have any um, practical function in society it's as storytellers access, making that story accessible. Uh, first of all, understanding that story and then making our understanding of that story accessible to the, to the wider community. And I suspect, I, I suspect uh, in, a, in a gentle, non, uh, as far as possible, non-political non-politically charged way encouraging people to challenge their their own perceptions it, 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 it's for me that was one of the most exciting things about actually studying archaeology and it, and it was actually the most surprising thing was that i actually went into into my archaeological education with a certain understanding that this is how history has happened uh, and and uh archaeology itself is as i came to understand the process of of finding what we don't already know uh, and actually helping people to, to to go through that is i think is a crucial part of what archaeologists should be doing in so much as I, I, mean, I don't know about you but i've heard some people saying uh well what does yeah this uh, this throws everything up in the air what do archaeologists know and you're like well that, that's precisely the point this is the, what archaeology is it is this exactly our, 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 exactly it's, it's our understanding was once this We've got new evidence, and our understanding has now changed to become this. Hmm. And if new evidence comes up, it will change to become that. Yeah. And you know, it, 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 it's it's you know it flies against a lot of uh, particularly political thinking, where it's all about having a position in the here and now that can't be changed, mm -hmm. and being a conviction person. Uh, my conviction is that mm -hmm. da 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 blah blah you know ABC. Um, uh, uh, but, um, and it's the same not just archaeology, any academic profession that is based that is evidence-based mm -hmm. um has to has to accept and rejoice in uncertainty and challenge and change well and and in that sense an ever better truth 
if you see what I mean. There is, there is, there is, there is, oh, but what is truth for somebody once <laughs> in the story? Well, and this, 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 is where, this is where I pull out my, that wonderful phrase that I recently learned, emergent truth. The ever, the ever, an ever better emergent truth. And it's also yeah. worthwhile saying this hasn't come out of nowhere. Uh, again, a couple of years ago, it was shown that uh, the, 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 the people uh, in the Neolithic in other parts of Europe certainly had a much more, as it were, suave look about them. They, uh, that, that was the phrase that was used. Uh, sk yeah. Skin pigmentation was simply a bit darker back then. Um, that, that, that's, that, that, and I think that's, that's a key point. For, you know, those of us in the archaeological and heritage world who, are, who stay uh, uh, perhaps more across the emerging research in these sorts of areas than the broader public and certainly the media who really got captivated by Cheddar Man quite mm -hmm. understandably and again in PR terms the team at the Natural History Museum in UCL played a blinder in terms of getting into the public domain mm -hmm. um, but the without, without being uh, too cheesy <laughs> absolutely <laughs> no, no they were, you know actually genuinely they, they, what they were they were very good at yeah. basing all the PR on the science mm -hmm. rooting it and, and, and relating it back to the science um but um no what i was gonna say was that you know th those of us in, in 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 the world and circles that we move in you know we've known for a long time that you know we all started off as you know probably you know, uh people uh, the most current popular theory is in in, in somewhere in, in in africa with black skin pigmentation and our pale skin pigmentation is an adaptation to uh, more northern latitudes uh, or southern latitudes, where the, um, you know, the the body chemistry requires well, the, sun, the, the sunlight is less strong, and therefore you need to be able to absolutely get absolutely. the vitamin D. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. primarily vitamin D. Mm -hmm. What what this has done is both fix it in terms of the population of Britain in uh, after the most recent ice age, mm -hmm. um, but also the time scale over which that pigmentation change might have happened, which yeah. appears to be shorter than what had previously been anticipated. Yeah, which itself is, is, is again, fascinating. This is what archaeology is. And, uh, yeah. and I, 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 I particularly love, uh, <laughs> I particularly, particularly love the idea that out of the, actually, as we recently found, 300,000 year history of humanity, not 200,000 years history yeah. of Homo sapiens, sorry. Humanity yeah. obviously goes back half a million. Um, yeah. uh, out of those 300,000 years, what we're looking at now then is, is a really small little bit at the end when suddenly yeah. some very pale, weird, strange looking humans turned up. <laughs> I love the idea of us being presented to to to, to our ancient um, our ancestors, and them just going, "What what happened?" <laughs> uh, it, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a reverse Julian Richards and have a meet the descendants? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, be like, you're, you're, you're pale, you're pasty, yeah. you're wearing clothes that are just rubbish. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you don't know how you don't know how to how to you know how to hunt a mammoth. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Where did we end up? The experiment failed, and then they just go off, yeah. and, and suddenly we don't exist anymore because they just give up. Um, <laughs> refer, refer it back to the mice and get the whole thing rebooted. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, that I, was so, a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Ref Galaxy reference to anyone that did get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, speaking of which, actually, just to bring this se segment to a close, um, forty-two. You know, this whole idea of the the life, the universe, and everything is forty-two. Yeah. Uh, now, 42, I do believe, if I get this right, is in computer speak, uh, the the numbers that represent the the uh, the star symbol. So, uh, you know, uh, the starburst symbol and the starburst symbol in computer speak means anything you want it to be. Isn't that cool? So, so uh, yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide, the meaning of the universe, life and everything is anything you want it to be that's isn't, just perfect isn't that wonderful uh i think we should segue into the next segment i think we should i think we should